A well-tuned table saw or miter saw can make very accurate cuts, especially if you use a good sled. But sometimes you have to custom fit a workpiece by shaving off tiny slivers from its length. Or you may miscut a miter by half a degree and you need to adjust it by removing just a little bit of material. It can be difficult to make such fine cuts with a power tool. That's what hand tools are for. Now, before you power tool users click away thinking I'm going to talk about hand planes again, that's not what this video is about. Sure, you could use a hand plane and a shooting board like this one to trim that end of your workpiece just a little bit at a time, both at 90 degrees and at 45. But some folks struggle with hand planes in general, or they simply don't want to do the tuning and sharpening required to make them work well. So what about using a sanding block instead? You've seen me use these carbide sanding blocks in the past. What makes them unique, besides the fact that the sole is a steel plate covered with carbide grit, which lasts a really long time, is that the side is perfectly square to the sole. That's one of the prerequisites of a hand plane on a shooting board. The side must be perfectly square to the sole, so as it runs on its side, the end of your workpiece will be square. Couldn't you use this sanding block the same way and forget about sharpening and tuning up a plane? You can, if you make some simple modifications. First I'll tell you about those modifications, then we'll talk about making the shooting board itself. On a hand plane, the cutter does not stretch all the way across the sole. There's a still a bit of cast iron next to the mouth. It's not much, but it forms a non-cutting surface which rides on the shooting board's fence so it won't shave the fence away. A sanding block like this one has grit from edge to edge. So I added a quarter inch spacer so I could produce just a little bit of a non-cutting area to go against my fence. I clamped it in place firmly, ensuring that it was flush with the sole of the sanding block. Then I bored pilot holes and I secured it with screws. I could have glued the spacer on, but this allows me to remove it if I want to for other tasks. I also rounded off the sharp edge to make it more comfortable to push in this position. Now I can use a sanding block with my shooting board just as I would a hand plane. Can you do this with a homemade sanding block? Sure, as long as the block side is square to the sole. Stick some self-adhesive sandpaper on it and leave about a quarter inch along the edge of the sole bare so it can ride against your fence. Personally, I prefer the carbide blocks for their durability. I use 120 grit, which for this purpose seems to be just about right because it gives a good compromise between fast stock removal and a smooth finish left behind on the end of the workpiece. Keep in mind though that any sanding block will load up with dust, so you do have to occasionally pause and give it a quick cleaning with a brush. Now, a little bit about the shooting board itself. I made this a few years ago. We have plans on our website which I'll link to below this video. This is unlike other shooting boards because it's a shooting board bench hook combo, meaning it has 90 degree and 45 degree fences, plus there are kerf guides in the rear fence so you can use it to make your cuts, then the shooting board to fine tune those cuts. The edge hooks on the front of your bench like a traditional bench hook, and there are extension hooks for supporting long boards while you cut those as well. The fence is replaceable if it gets chewed up over time, and so are the flat base panels. This is a great feature because as you spoil the base panels or the fence through multiple cuts, there's nothing left to support the fibers of your workpiece. And having the ability to replace these surfaces keeps your cuts nice and crisp. A bench hook and a shooting board are great tools to have, so why should they be enjoyed only by hand plane users? Try it with a sanding block, you'll see. I've been using DuraGrit carbide sanding products for years, and I still haven't worn out the first ones I bought. If I have a rough edge to smooth, a corner to chamfer, or a curve to shape, more often than not, I'm reaching for one of these cleverly designed tools. It's one of those workshop secrets I wish I'd discovered long ago. Check out the link below this video to see for yourself. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.